Engineering graphics and design learners, welcome to How to EGD. Those of you who've been here before will know that this channel is all about supporting and inspiring engineering graphics and design learners across South Africa. And I promise you that this video and the series to follow will be no different. So what is this series about? It's called How to Hack Your Path. And although I am limited, I can't actually go show you how to hack or cheat this pack, I will be able to direct you and teach you the requirements for you to complete a successful pack. By no means can I give you the answers or an unfair advantage over those who have not seen these videos, but I will be able to teach you the different parts and components of this pack so that when you do it on your own and by your own, of course, you will be able to successfully complete this pet and you'll know exactly what is the requirements and the expectations from the Department of Education. And so this formal pet document, you have to remember, is actually a fourth exam component for all of you. And so I will have to refrain from giving you the answers, but I promise you, I will give you clear direction as set out by the official pet document. So this series is specifically tailored for all access members. So if you're not a member yet and you want access to these videos, please click on the join button. Of course, my lesson stored to my own learners in this class in future is still gonna be for free and live stream, including the times that I actually teach them on the actual PAT task for this year. So you'll still have that, but if you want access right now, make sure you click on the join button. So without any further ado, I'd like to get straight into what is this specific path about, have a good understanding, and then the videos following that will zoom into the different components and requirements set out in the official PAT document. So with that said, let's dive in and have a look at the actual PAT, what it's all about, what are the requirements, and get an understanding of the scope of work and the requirements that is set out before you. Please remember, to ask your questions in the comment section, I'd love to hear them and I'd love to respond to them. We are together in this journey of successfully completing the grade 12 pack for this year. Thank you for watching. Let's get going. Okay, so the basis of my instruction will be taken from this official document as received by the Department of Education, specifically with regards to the guidelines for the practical assessment task. Now, when a learner reads this for the first time, and by the way, it is as a download in the description, it might seem overwhelming. And that's what I'm going to help you with in this series. I'm going to take off the misunderstandings and the misconceptions and help you to focus on what are the specific requirements so that you can absolutely hack or nail this pet. Now, the first section, B here, helps a learner to understand the seriousness of it. So I'm just going to highlight one or two important parts here. This pet is compulsory. It is part of your formal assessment task that you will do. And it contributes 25% to your final NSC mark. The mark that you end up getting on your final certificate, once you've completed grade 12, 25% of your EGD mark comes from this pet. So it is a very important document. The second part is we will focus on the civil project. We're not doing the mechanical. Um, and so please take note of that and then although the sharing of knowledge and ideas are permissible and that's what i'm going to be doing in my series okay none of the presentations may be shared or copied so you cannot copy or share any of these designs that you'll be doing yourself with any of your friends please take note of that the entire pad must be completed individually and so that also will limit what I am able to provide for you in this series. All the presentations, including the front page, index table content, management plan, tables, etc., must be your original own work. Okay, I can show you previous examples that is irrelevant to give you ideas of what is the requirements, and I can talk you through it, but you will have to make your own versions of each of these. All right, then the last two points here is that it must be of appropriate higher order grade 12 complexity so you can't submit something that looks like it was done by a grade 8 learner it needs to be at a grade 12 standard and then the last thing here is the pat will be assessed according to the assessment 
And the last thing here is that the PAT will be assessed according to the relevant assessment criteria and checklist. Now, at the end of this document is a complete checklist, and that is where the secrets lie, okay? And I'll discuss that with you shortly. But it's these checklists here at the back, which holds all the secrets to a successful path, and I'll talk you through that. So let's read through with each other, and I'll have some visuals coming up to show you what this path entails. So the scenario. The National Monument Council of South Africa recently restored a historical significant building in a wine estate. And to cater for the visitors, they have granted now a budget for a new restaurant and a small museum on the estate. That is what you are designing, a new restaurant and a small museum. You have to set up, submit a proposed design solution for that new restaurant and the small museum. That's your intro, intro into this pad. If you understand that, then you understand the broad scope of this pad. What follows here is the details of that restaurant, okay, of the museum. And so you're going to be using this information. Let's have a look. The restaurant must be, let's see if it's another, another color, the restaurant here must be a single story brick structure with a maximum total area of 200 square meters. The roof must be a gable design with a 500 millimeter overhang on all sides. That's the important part of this. With corrugated steel roof sheeting and finished with fascia boards, gutters, rainwater downpipes on the sides, as well as barred boards on the end. The restaurant must consist of what? large open inside dining area, no less than 110 square meters, a large kitchen with separate scullery, separate pantry, unisex toilet facilities, toilet facility for disabled. In the dining area, there must be a dedicated section with a large countertop for serving a buffet lunch on Sundays and for the display on sale of over-the-counter eats and refreshments. So there needs to be a display area as well. There must be wide wooden multi-panel sliding doors with three or more panels along two adjacent walls of the dining area leading out into an adjoining three meter wide veranda. This sounds a lot, but if you take the time to just read through it, you're going to get some understanding, which runs along the same adjacent walls of the restaurant. This is actually very important because there's a common wall here. The veranda, which is not included in the 200 square meters of the restaurant, must be covered with wooden pagodas as it will be used as additional outside dining spaces. Okay, so there's additional outside dining spaces. The kitchen must have a floor area. So now they come to the kitchen and they are helping you out here to get understanding. The kitchen, so we can do another color here, must have a floor area of less than 30, no less than 35 be situated at the back of the restaurant. The kitchen must be separated from the dining area by what? A brick wall with a single 180 swing door leading into the kitchen and a single 180 swing door leading out of the kitchen into the dining area. There must be a single sink, built-in cupboards and sufficient work surfaces for the preparation of food and placing of kitchen appliances as well as space for two large refrigerators, two large industrial stoves in the kitchen. Leading off the kitchen must be a separate scullery with two double zinks and a space for two dishwashers as well as separate lockable pantry. The scullery and the pantry must each have floor areas of approximately. So they're very specific on those requirements. Both the kitchen and the scullery must have an exterior door and windows. Some of you are already getting this. What am I doing? I'm highlighting the specifications, okay? And so that's part of your own journey in preparing yourself of to get understanding yet you'll have to come up and that's one of the first requirements that we'll look at the unisex toilet facility must be directly accessible from the inside dining area so the access there of the restaurant the facility must consist five separate cubicles each with a toilet a wash basin and its own small window very clear on that one of the cubicles must have a larger door more space to accommodate disabled the building for the museum, now we're getting to the, so this first part here, they just spoke about the restaurant, it's all of this here, that was just the restaurant, and now we're moving to the museum part of this. So let's again get to orange. 
The museum must be a single story, semi-detached, six by eight meter brick structure. Very important, the semi-detached part that stands adjacent, which means next to, and shares what? A common wall with the restaurant. That's very important. So it's, that's why it's semi-detached. There is a common wall that joins these two. The museum must be accessible off the veranda, must have no direct access into any part of the restaurant. Keep a note of that. To complement the heritage of the estate, the entrance to the museum must have a typically century placed decorative Cape Dutch facade above a double wooden door with a sash window on either side. Look at some of those designs. Then the museum must have a gabled roof with a corrugated steel roof sheeting finish. Okay, we're still on back on the restaurant and the museum. The new restaurant and the museum must have sufficient electrical lighting and switch socket outlets in all the rooms and areas. All sewer and wastewater from the restaurant must be connected to the manual on the municipal sewer line in Hillside. And we'll look at that now. Include in the design must be driveways, parking with 10 standard size parking bays situated close to the restaurant, two parking bays for the disabled. So this year was our first look at the actual scenario. Added onto that, they've provided for you the site plan and we'll have a video on this detailing exactly the requirements and the placement of your actual PAD document. But just take note of this document because it's got plenty of information. You need to keep up with that. Then, in the first part, it is formulating the design brief to the 20 specifications, the list of five possible constraints, as well as the management plan. So this year will be our first video following this one. All right. Then after that, we will look at conducting research. There we go. Then we'll go into how to prepare detailed freehand drawings. And then we're going to look at how to select the best solution, which is also an important part of this process. Thereafter, we will have to look at presentation requirements. And this is where it becomes serious stuff, because these are actual drawings according to SANS. And so the first one here will be a floor plan that we will look at. We'll have to look at two elevations. All right. And then we'll look at the detailed section that follows that. And of course, it will have its own criteria here. And then on the last part here, before we get to putting everything together, there are two more requirements. Second last one is a site plan. And the last one is a two-point perspective. So we will make a video on each one of these components to help you, guide you through. And that will be available for you as an all-access member. All right. What I want to show you is this last part here. And this is the checklist. This is probably the most important part of the path. Why? Because they show you consecutively the things that you need to do to complete this path. If we look at design brief, 1.1 is the first paragraph that gives a background and comprehensive description of what is to be designed. If you get this part right, you get two out of two. The second paragraph, which must be numbered 1.2 on your actual page, is your role and the description. And of course, I'll talk this in detail so you know exactly what is this requirement. The 1.3 is your 20 given specifications. 1.4 is your five possible constraints. 1.5 is the management plan. And so if you follow this, if you research 2.1, these are the things that you research about. Examples of construction, details of wooden multi-panel sliding doors. 2.2, details of wooden pergolas. People, it doesn't help you researching anything else. These are the things that you will have to research about. And so if you stick to this checklist, you are going to absolutely hack this path. These are the key things that we will talk through in the coming videos. We talk about freehand concepts. And you, so you can see it, this speaks exactly to the actual path document that we just went through. Selecting the best freehand solution, preparing your drawing paper, pages, layout of the floor plan, on the next one, it talks about your two elevations, your detailed sections, your site plan, your two-point perspective. And then it goes on to check, did you, con did you meet the continuous self-elevation requirements? Did you sub submit at times that you needed to? Do you have the cover page, the index, the bibliography? All of that is in this checklist. And so you will be able to manage your own path effectively if you understand this checklist and implement it correctly.
Okay, that is the overview of the EGD pack for this year. I'm sure it gives you a better understanding of the requirements and the scale of this project, but it should also inspire you to start working on it immediately and do your absolute best to hack your own pack. And so please, if you need more support, click the join button. You're welcome to ask your questions via the comments and make sure you share this series also with your friends. Thank you for watching. Now it's your turn.